This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. Hello and welcome to episode 152 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Today we have a topic that I'm particularly interested in. I'm interested in all of them, aren't I? But this is one that I've pondered for many years and it's the idea of transformative travel. Taking a trip somewhere or maybe, you know, lots of travel over time that somehow transforms your life in some way or transforms your character basically has some kind of big impact, um, you know, whether it be on your like personal development or, um, you know, big picture of your life and so on. So <laughs> I think lots of things can uh, kind of get categorized under transformative travel, but it's one of those things where I think, you know, one of the biggest reasons I travel is because of the things it changes in me and about me. So, I, um, yes, we have three guests today who uh, are talking about this topic from various angles. Um, and I also, uh, just n- only a few hours ago, a mere few hours ago, mentioned the topic in the Thoughtful Travelers Facebook group, thinking it would be nice to hear a couple of other viewpoints. Um, the conversation really took off. It's been very interesting. So I can't share everything, but I did think it would be interesting to, um, summarize some of the different issues raised. So for a start, Rachel said, as a skeptic, a self-confessed one, she said, if you're seeking transformation, you won't find it. It's just making transformation a commodity. So, you know, can you go traveling intentionally looking for transformation? I tend to agree, probably not. Uh, And kind of connected to that, there was quite some discussion about whether traveling in an organized group trip leaves room for transformation. And uh, Eva said that, for example, on an organized trip where everything's done for you, there's not much challenge in it, so maybe there can't be much transformative growth. But she said she was actually one of her most transformative um, travels was on an organized tour, but it was a nine-day hike in the Sahara, so uh, perhaps a more experiential trip. As Singh then mentioned, he said that, you know, sometimes the experiential tours that he runs, he runs them um, from a photography perspective, uh, get people to, you know, really be in new experiences in exciting settings. So it can be transformative. But he agreed uh, that mostly for him, the most transformative experiences have been those unscheduled serendipitous moments. You might remember me talking to Singh about a time in India where he ended up kind of uh, being invited into uh, an Indian Oh, I want to say boxing rink, martial art of some kind, wrestling, maybe, I don't know, sorry, saying, um, as a, you know, as a transformative moment, I suppose, where he, uh, you know, got to really meet the locals and have something kind of shift. Uh, so, you know, can you have that kind of transformation on a group trip? Don't know. Probably it's easier to have something happen when you're kind of, you know, really taking um taking travel on by yourself now kim said something really interesting too she said that um transformation she believes comes over time it's not just you know a a yearly vacation might not transform you but she said over time and and i guess she also means kind of over many trips it starts to really change the way that you think about the world and i really like what kim said about she said I said, I find putting faces to the world's headlines creates a human connection that changes how you think about the world. I no longer think of a headline as news. I think of how a headline impacts a country I visited, people I've met, businesses I frequented, and immediately think of how I can help. So I, I really, uh, I mean, that, that's absolutely my philosophy too, that being able to connect, uh, you know, what happens in the world in a personal way to things you've seen and people you've met really changes the way that you feel about the world and how you act. You know, I've, I've often said, uh, you know, somewhat facetiously, but really I do mean it. If we could all travel and meet all kinds of people, we would um, basically have peace on earth. You know, if, you, if we all knew all the different kinds of people in the world, different cultures, different religions, and got to know them as real people, then I think that a lot of the conflicts just would not exist anymore. Um, slightly idealistic, is it? Or would it really happen? 
I don't know. Um, now, Darlene had another perspective kind of actually to that, um, not just the group tour thing, but she said uh, she um, lives in the United States and for many years the only kinds of things she'd seen about travel were the, the fancy TV shows where they stay in expensive hotels and eat in uh, fancy restaurants. And so she kind of thought through that, oh, she can't travel, she can't afford to. And eventually, thanks to um, Rick Steves, she learned that actually she could travel much more inexpensively than she thought um, and now has had several trips to Europe and they have been quite transformational to the point where um, she's expecting to actually move to Europe and make it a home base soon. So um, that has been absolutely transformational. So there's just a few um, perspectives on how transformational travel can be. And let me get to my guests now because they have a few more perspectives on this really interesting issue. So first up, I'm talking to Dean O'Shea. You might remember him from a previous episode. Uh, He runs uh, now a company called Unbelievable Adventures, which helps corporate professionals use like adventure travel or trips as a kind of a self-development tool. It's all sort of arose from his own personal experiences. So clearly he absolutely believes in the power of travel to be transformative. So I was um, saying to Dean how I loved that, how he'd so intentionally devised these trips to lead to personal development. Uh, and in the past um, episodes when we've discussed it, it's actually, you know, it is has happened. So even though it's kind of intentional, it's been able to come to come to fruition. Uh, but I asked him to give me some more examples. I have a couple of friends there. They're now engaged. Actually, I'm going to their wedding in Thailand in three weeks. Oh, lovely. Which is great. Um, but yeah, so when I, uh, I mean, I, I've known Johnny, who's the, uh, the, the guy for years. And, um, you know, when he met Natalie, I, I knew instantly that, right, that was it, you know, mm-hmm. that, that was it for life because they're, they're more than the same person. I think at one point they maybe like will just merge into the same person <laughs> and just become one. Uh, <laughs> so they're, they're, they're super right for each other. But, um, so the, the problem that they faced though, was that, uh, Johnny is, is a very adventurous, quite physical guy. You know, we, uh, we grew up, uh, you know, going to the gym and doing sports and all things like that. But Natalie was never really, um, uh, never really that physical, never really into uh, into fitness, and it was um, it was kind of a a little bit of a difficulty for them while they were traveling because mm. Johnny always wanted to do these amazing adventurous things, and you know, you know, sometimes Natalie wouldn't be up for it. So uh, I actually went out there to meet them in Thailand. And I, uh, this was last year mm-hmm. and I designed a trip, um, kind of like a bonding trip for the both of them. Mm. So I, I set them a challenge, which was to get to a deserted island using only human power mm-hmm. and then to inhabit the island and, and live there for a couple of days, uh, you know, That's kind of cool. t- 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 testing your wits and, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, this, this was specifically for Natalie and, um, because uh, she's a she's a school teacher, uh, or she was a school teacher, and she quit to to go travelling with her fiance after they got engaged. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so it was it was really fun seeing how she approached the challenge and how she you know used um, like used the resources that she had to solve the problem. So uh, you know if we she decided that we should get kayaks, so we got kayaks and we went and got supplies and tools and things like this, and then. We, we chose this this little island that was just off the coast of um, Koh Lanta. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we we kayaked out to the island and we took some things with us. Then we gathered all of these uh, scraps and things. We built a shelter. We explored the island, found some coconuts, um, uh, which we then ate, made a little campfire. And, yeah, it's just the three of us on this <laughs> island for a few days just with, you know, what we had in our kayaks in a ukulele. Oh, and, uh, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we slept out under the stars and uh, survived a couple of tropical thunderstorms, which was uh, which was very challenging. But, you know, kind of we, we got through it. Aww. And then at the end of the trip, um, we went back to the mainland. And now actually they have they have their own podcast. It's um, not a podcast. Sorry, they have their own websites called Year of the Challenge. Oh, I have to look it up. Great. So, so now what they're doing is they're accepting more challenges from from everyone else. So you can actually go to their <laughs> website and submit challenges for them to do. Oh, awesome. So it's really kind of ign- <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of ignited a little fire under them. And um, they recently did Everest Base Camp, 
mm. uh, together, which was um, super challenging. Mm. Uh, and now, now they're kind of winding down for the wedding, but then after the wedding, they're going to go out and do some more stuff. So wow. that was a, a great little trip that we did. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, quite yeah, quite dramatically changed, um, especially Natalie. Then that's amazing. Yeah, and, and it was super fun uh, to see them doing it together as well. Yeah. It's kind of like a bonding. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's a real life, life bonding kind of thing. Oh, how fun. I'm not sure that I want to take you up on your challenges, though. I, I would be, <laughs> I would feel quite confronted by by that challenge. Um, I th- yeah, maybe, yeah. I'm sure once I was in it, I would be quite capable of doing it. But the mental barrier of thinking, oh, I can't do that is quite strong. Yeah, and, and, it, and it is so, so it's, it's totally individual to everyone that I work with. Um, mm. For example, I I uh, just took a guy hiking in the UK um, for a weekend um, a few weeks ago. He's a photographer, um, and uh, so he he was more inter- he was interested in coming from a place of again where he um, you know not so physical um, wanted to learn kind of more fitness and and things to do with uh, with getting into shape. So we did it. We did a, a one day hike in the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, just in the countryside and you know along the way we talked about some of the issues that was going on in his life um designed a little program for him to uh you know good morning routine doing some yoga doing some other breathing exercises and you know just kind of light uh light exercises that you can do every day to kind of just build some strength mm-hmm. and uh yeah we had a lovely chat really got to know each other and yeah and now we've become fast friends so oh brilliant so, you know, from from the big grand adventures all the way down to the little, you know, yeah, simpler. The little bottom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone, everyone's different, and everyone everyone learns and changes in a new way. Yes, yes, yes. And you don't have to be on a deserted island to have a transformational travel experience. This is true. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it can be, can be in the comfort of your own backyard almost. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! Goodness, you must have a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really what lights me up. Um, yeah, I can tell. And, you know, I've I, I've kind of uh, been selfishly hoarding my adventures over the years, and now <laughs> it's great to be able to give back. So, mm, mm, mm. oh, it must be very rewarding too to see some of the results. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's incredible. And you know, I I kind of do this because I I like making friends with with like minded people who mm. love to travel. Yep. So you know, e- every trip that I go on, I make a lifelong friend. So. I went on to tell Dean in that conversation that the making friends and talking to like-minded people part is actually one of the main reasons I make this podcast so I could really relate to how he experiences the same thing in the trips that he organises. Now, on to Nate Hake, my second guest for the day, and he has had um, many experiences of travelling that have been um, personally quite transformative. And in this chat, we talk about uh, some particularly transformative moments in his traveling life, which have led him down a completely new career path and certainly off the kind of the life track that he had in mind. I, I worked as a corporate lawyer in the US for five years before I became a digital nomad and started traveling. And I think if you went back in time, Five years ago, old Nate would have a very hard time understanding the life that I live now or how it is that I got here. <laughs> but uh, people always ask me the moment when that the sort of idea of, of doing this entered my mind. And I think back to a time when I was in, I was on a one week vacation in Nicaragua with some friends and ended up hanging out with this. They were actually an Australian couple who were had just started in Mexico City and were beginning like a two year trek from Mexico City all the way to the bottom of South America down to Patagonia. And they were just, they, they had been lawyers in Australia and they'd mm. saved money and they had left their job. And we got to talking and hanging out a few days in San Juan del Sur. And they were just, they were awesome. And by the end of it, they kept saying like, Nate, you should just quit your job and come with us. Just, and I kept, <laughs> you know, I kept thinking like, Oh, that's funny guy. Like that's so, that's so funny. But also, kind of put the idea in my head mm-hmm. that well, maybe that is something that is something that people do. I, I hadn't even considered travel long term as a as an option at that point in my life. I, I assumed that a gap year in college, which I never did, was was the one opportunity and I had missed it. Yeah. And otherwise you had to wait until retirement. Cool. And so I think just like hanging out with that Australian couple there in, in Nicaragua and sort of having that idea in my mind was 
was really sort of the pivotal moment. And then, and then I went back and I worked for another year as, as a lawyer, but eventually I did, I did leave and, and just took off on a one-way ticket to Mexico City for what I thought would be a year-long trip. And here we are three years later, and now I've, I've transition to being a digital nomad and working online and writing the travel blog and, you know, and doing all. And I also I have a few like software startups, very different than my, than my lawyer life. And a lot of that's just, you know, at the end of the day, because of travel. But I think that, you know, I think travel has been a really productive thing in my life. And I think that that, you know, that trip to Nicaragua has, has been pretty life changing. Mm, interesting. Um, I often find that people, uh, uh, so that people from um, American backgrounds are much less likely to think that it's okay to quit your job and go and do something else. Whereas in Australia, it's a much more common, it's, we're fairly flexible about that kind of thing. You might go off and you may well come back and work again, but it's okay to just disappear for a while. And I think that um, we have yeah, a bit more of a culture of doing that. We have things like long service leave where even if you are employed, you can have three months off paid. Or when I was a kid, my dad had six months paid leave. And so we went to Europe and, you know, did a budget trip around Europe for six months. And so I think we have a, a like that possibility is a bit more open to us. Uh, were, were you enjoying lawyering or, you, you know, how did how'd that whole career played out for you? You know, uh, yes and no. Mm-hmm. I was a trial lawyer, so I was unlike most lawyers who never see inside a courtroom. My job was to litigate these big multi-million dollar cases, but they were super high pressure, and mm. you know, I had I had trials that would last for weeks or even months at a time. And when you're in trial or prepping for trial, you're working a hundred or more hours a week, Ugh. and it just isn't. Even though I actually enjoyed, I really enjoyed public speaking, and I enjoyed getting up in the courtroom. I, I nobody can work that long and not burn out at some point. Yeah. And, you know, after five years of that, especially in the middle of my twenties, I just sort of watched my twenties go by mm-hmm. and realized that, you know, the only thing I ever really enjoyed during that whole five years in terms of personal growth or development were the chances that I did get to take vacations. And the one good thing about being a trial lawyer was sometimes cases would settle and then they would let you just take off for a week or two. Mm. And I would just go fly somewhere randomly you know and find some friend or go somewhere Mm -hmm. and and i found that that travel was the those were the experiences that i i I really enjoyed a lot and so it's just i think at some point that there is this culture in the u.s not only mention of not being as receptive towards long-term travel although that is changing but there is this culture of of prioritizing one's career even to the point of of being detrimental to one's one's health right. um, that I think is really pervasive in American culture. I mean, Americans work much longer hours than, than most other, mm. most other office workers around the world. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that, it was just, it was, it wasn't, the work was bad. Um, and I actually liked the work and the work that I worked for, but it, the people I worked with, but it was just that there was way too much of it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred hour week is no fun for anyone. You've, got nothing right. else going on in life if that's what you're doing isn't it so exactly yeah 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 it's not um yeah it's not a way you want to spend like four decades of your life right <laughs> wow cool um, would you ever go back to it um you know i think uh, i i still i'm still a barred lawyer i still i still i go through the trouble of paying my dues and taking the classes and doing everything you need to do but um, I don't think I'll ever go back to being a trial lawyer again. No, I think that ship has probably sailed after three years of being out of it. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I will still continue to use my legal expertise in, in some of my businesses and stuff, and I use that all the time. There's lots about Nate's story that I like, but I have to have to say I'm a little bit proud that it was an Australian couple that led to some of these big transformations uh, in Nate's life by being that catalyst to think, huh, maybe I actually could quit my job and go traveling. So um, it's a pretty big decision, but people are making it more and more these days. And I love that. So yeah, lots of transformation going on. Now, my final guest today is Fiona Galloway and transformative travel is totally her thing. It's her tagline for the trips she runs. And I asked her why she uses this phrase, transformative travel. It is definitely my passion. And look, when I chose to kind of fly under that banner, I hesitated and I had to really feel into why I was hesitating. And at the end of the day, I realized because it is just quite a powerful um, phrase to go with. 
Um, but it really um, encompasses all that I like to invoke in people um, through a travel experience. So, you know, traveling in a way that transforms their own lives, but also transforms um, the, the environment and the communities um, through which they travel. So, Transformative travel might, for me, might look like um, something where you're contributing to communities that you're passing through, um, supporting um, conservation conservation research or projects um, in, in different locations, which I've had quite a lot to do with in the past. Um, but I also like like to take that transformative transformative aspect, it's quite a mouthful, <laughs> to another level um, by sort of bringing into the mix for myself and, and for others um, of that inner work um, with uh, different practices such as yoga and mindfulness, meditation to, to really um, start that, that inner change that then really transforms and opens up to connecting even more deeply to nature or to the world around you. And then, that rolling into um, a real catalyst for change in behaviours, in um, choices that are made, and going back to that concept of being more aware of how you move through the world and and treading lightly, being really conscious about how you travel. So that for me, that's very multi layers um, and witnessing people go through an experience that's sort of curated in a way that. Um, cultivates that is really quite amazing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I I think that nearly all travel is transformative, oh, at absolutely. least on a personal level, if nothing more. Um, yeah. But e- and it's it's sort of just incidentally um, transformative, even if you That's don't it. intentionally think you're doing it. But to take it to that extra level and and really intentionally try and create that or enhance and note that transformation is really powerful, I think. I really like that um, That yeah. extra layer of it is, um, yeah, is really impressive. Yeah, and that's, that's um, you know, that might look like, uh, which a lot of us do when we travel anyway, just really unplugging and taking that time out. But myself, I love being in a situation and being with others in a situation where there's actually no choice. <laughs> there's no Wi-Fi. We're off-grid. Um, We're really living or existing closely to the rhythms of nature from sunrise to sunset and beyond, you know, and just watching that that deep change that takes place in people over a week or even a few days is really incredible. Um, It's... It's undeniable and I think a lot of people might go into um, a travel experience like that and not really expect quite how powerful that's going to be for them. But um, without a doubt, you know, it's a common story after the, after the fact that they'll be expressing really still processing sort of that inner um, working that they experience for themselves. So, yeah, it's there's so many possibilities. <laughs> It sounds amazing, and except that I'm feeling nervous when you think when I think of being off grid, and the fact yeah. that I feel nervous about it is a really bad sign. But then I'm thinking, but if I'm away from my son, I have to be able to, you know, what if something happened to him? And you know, then those start, the worry brain starts to kick in. Um, but yeah, I need to challenge myself one day to to be. Um, I mean, yeah. all my work is online. I, you know, it's such an important part of my life, and it's hard to imagine being away from it as well. But uh, and I can I can relate to that. Uh, but but think back about how you used to travel twenty years ago. You know, yeah, we oh, we, yeah, exactly. we we called our parents sort of once a month or what have you. We sent an air letter. I think I even remember sending a telegram, <laughs> showing my age. But um, there was a beautiful simplicity in that and there was yes. less noise around us, so to Absolutely. speak, when we were travelling. And, you know, modern daily life now is so noisy. Yeah. We don't really have that chance to – we might think we're stopping, you know, we might be sitting by a pool, but we're still scrolling through Facebook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or we might be um, sitting in the bush or what have you, but we're still checking in. So to really challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone mm. and take – a few days at least of experiencing that and 
how not only you declutter, but that connection that happens to self, that connection that happens to the environment around you, but ultimately you really have that opportunity for more space and more creativity and more productivity in the end by taking that that time and really allowing yourself to reset the rhythms. Um, it sounds a weird concept when you are online all day producing, you know. Mm-hmm. And creating, no, but I know? believe you completely. I think I've that, that space as yeah. well. Yeah. But if you really, um, if you give everything else some quiet and stillness and, and space to breathe, my God, it's just like a powerhouse at the other end of that experience. So I feel like between the chat in the Facebook group and all my guests today, I've produced more questions than answers. Uh, Can you have a transformative travel experience in an organized trip? Can you intentionally go out intending to have a transformation? Do you have to wait for serendipitous moments or what I think the answer is, it's some combination of all of those things. Uh, I just definitely believe, above all else, that you are more likely to have some kind of transformation if you travel than if you stay home. I mean, it depends what you do at home, but if you are basically staying at home, living life in your normal routine, it's much harder to have a transformation than if you step outside your comfort zone and do something a bit different. So... Um, anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about transformative travel. So come over to the Facebook group and continue the conversation. We're at Thoughtful Travelers and there's a link in the show notes. You can find the show notes for this episode at notaballerina.com slash 152. And they will also include the links where you can find more about my great guests today. Uh, for a start, we had Dean from Unbelievable Adventures and you can find him at unbelievableadventures.co.uk. I then chatted with Nate from Travel Lemming and you can find him at travellemming.com. And last of all, I chatted with Fiona from Wild Awake and you can find her at wildawaketravel.com. I hope that you have got some good food for thought and I really would love to hear about how travel has transformed your life. So please hop over to the Facebook group and let me know. Thank you very much for listening. This has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now. Bye.